let's move on and demonstrate another uh, way of quickly designing up an element with the new responsive engine and that will be a hero section. So uh, I've added in a group below my uh, navigation and uh, let's call this hero and uh, I'm going to align it at the middle of my page and make this into uh... so when I'm building with the new responsive engine um, and something that uh, I encourage people to do is I'd say 90% of the time use rows or columns like that is the bare basics the, the kind of the core of CSS um, and uh, I, th I think one of the reasons that's so essential is that when you do come to shrinking your uh, app down and making it responsive is that they are like the most predictable ways to work about where your elements are going to go when your screen shrinks down. But in this instance, uh, we're going to use a line to parent because uh, I want my uh, content of my hero to be right in the middle. Um, so if I, let's make my hero section a fixed height and uh, then let's add in some text. Uh, so let's just give it a little bit more styling uh, okay and I'm not going to have it as fixed width because I want it to be responsive so unless I chose a percentage value fixed width will mean that when it shrinks down it doesn't the text doesn't adapt to the size of the page um, so let's have it as layout will have uh, max width 100% so it can't get any bigger than the container the page element that it's in and we'll just check that should oh no I made a slight mistake there Let's go with, okay, let's just go with fixed width, 100%. Okay. Oh, that's still not working. What have I done wrong there? Yeah, you can see, building with bubble, constantly learning, uh, you just kind of have to click around and get the, till you get what you want. Maybe the issue is that, um, yeah, maybe the issue is that I'm using it in a uh, parent container that is aligned to parent. Let's just swap that out and uh, we'll go for a column layout. Okay, right, there's something that I haven't quite got right there. Anyway, um, so if I'm going to, we'll, we'll put this back to uh, aligned to parent and then align it in the middle. Now, using align to parent, if I place a, uh, a text, another text element in here and align to the center, I'm gonna get this nasty overlapping effect. So how do I get around that? Yeah, so you can see the text is uh, on top of each other. I can group them together and I'm gonna group them into a column. And then, uh, make that column width 100 and then let's place this in the middle and uh, th like this has got a min height to it there we go get rid of that uh, so yeah sometimes when you're working with a responsive engine uh, it is just finding where there is a value that you don't really want there to be a value um, as you saw there it just all snapped into place when we found it uh, let's preview that And let's have a look at how that is responsive. So we've still got an issue with something in here. Uh, is it the width? No. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna try, is it this? Here we go, it's the hero width. So that should be set instead to max, uh, 
there we go. I think that's it. I was just saying a moment ago, it's about finding, oh no, it's not that, about finding the missing values. Um, right, what do we want to look at? Okay, let's put a button in. There we go. Every hero should have a clear call to action. So we'll just get rid of the min height there. Align our button centrally. And let's preview that. Okay, not looking too bad, at least for uh, demo content. And let's have a look at the responsive. Okay, we have still got something min width. There we go. Right, there was a figure remaining from when I've been creating groups. A min width was uh, stopping it from being fully responsive. So that's our header in place. Um, and let's have a look at columns now. And then if we've got time at the end, I will go back and go uh, through how to make each of these different elements responsive. Um, but for columns, so we have our hero section here. And um, there we go. Just move myself over to the right. So we've got navigation and we've got hero section. Now, how would we go about with the new response engine laying out uh, some columns below? Maybe we want to list some features. So let's add in another group. And we're going to make this group into a row because it's going to contain two columns in it. Um, and so this will also be our page width. We get rid of that min value because that might frustrate us later. Uh, align it to the middle. And then uh, let's add in, uh, let's put our padding in our columns. So I've got a group. And uh, now I want to place two columns into it. And we can take a group and place it inside that group. And this is going to be one of our columns. So it's going to be a column. And then if I remove the width value, uh, and in fact, I'll give it a little bit of height so it's easier to see. There we go. And then let's have a look at it in our elements tree. I'll name this columns. Okay, so uh, let's call this uh, left. Oh, bad spelling there. And so left, if I copy and then go into columns and hit paste, I now end up with two columns. And so because I have haven't placed any constraints on these columns, they are going to take up the same amount of space. Now, if I start putting elements in there that do have min widths or, or max widths that begin to constrain it, then they will, will take effect. But right now I have two columns, which um, if I label this one right, and then I am going to apply a little bit of styling so they're easier to see. Uh, right, let's, let's make it really easy. Let's apply uh, a red, to that one and uh, a green to this one. And then let's hit preview. Okay, two equally sized columns. So what might I do uh, at this stage? Uh, well, I'll put some padding in the columns uh, because I like to have that 20 pixel padding uh, so importantly on, on the left and the right. Ooh, let's hit tab there. Uh, and we'll just add a header in there so that it's got a little bit of content. Let's have a look how that behaves responsively. So you'll see they stay the same width all the way down uh, until things get ridiculously small and the elements begin to chop uh, and we begin to lose parts. 
So with responsive web design, there'll come a point where you want to stop it from shrinking and you'd like them to end up on top of each other or stacked. So let's have a look at that. So in fact, we'll go back into the uh, responsive editor and we'll say um, anything below or including a width of uh, 992. Uh, in fact, no, in fact, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll just do it below. Anything below 992, we want our uh, columns to stack. So we can do that by setting um, a conditional statement. Uh, in fact, can we do that in here? Yes, we can do it here. Uh, so in the responsive editor or in the UI builder, you can do it. We can say page width uh, is less than 992. And then do you have to be a little bit careful here? So I'm not placing a min width value in there. I could place a min width value in there of half of 992, um, but that would mean there'd come a point when half of 992 is still greater than the total width of the, the browser the user's using. Um, so that's not a great approach. Uh, instead, we're going to use a conditional statement and uh, width will say uh, min width is a hundred percent and I can right click on there and I can go on to the other one and right click and then hopefully there we go they pop on top of each other let's do a little bit of styling to make that look nicer um, we take our column and uh, let's get rid of that nasty background as an illustration and let's put a, a border in there and a little bit of a curve to it. Uh, in fact, I don't think that should be white. That needs to be a dark gray, which is really sharp. Yeah, that's better. Um, do the same here. that color across I like being consistent um, and let's preview that and we'll notice some things that need tidying up like a gap in between so because I'm using a 20 pixel margin elsewhere in my app uh, I will use a 20 pixel margin here um, so I'm going to select my columns and actually instead of applying it as a margin or padding I can apply it as a gap and if I apply it as a, as a gap of 20 for the row gap and the column gap then you'll see something rather nice happens here which is that when it goes to the full width it also includes that gap in there so we have now a responsive column layout which stacks and adapts no matter how wide or how small the page is we're making good progress on the responsive side of things. So let's work our way back up the app and uh, look at making these other, other elements responsive. Starting with our hero, um, because that would be nice and quick. So if we go and preview it, we'll see that at some point, this text becomes a little bit too large. Um, let's do something about that. So we can edit it and we can say and the current width values down here as well as having the shortcuts up here um, we can say uh, when the screen width gets below let's say 570 let's change the font size here so width our uh, width is uh, let's go this time equal to or less than uh, 570 uh, font size and let's take it down to say 36 and you'll see when it hits 570 well technically 569 uh, it shrinks down 